Hello everyone, Sean here, and today in this video, it's that time of the year, we are going to go over the top 10 best games from me for 2020. Uh, so it's a personal list, not generally speaking, and these are all games that I definitely played from 2020. Before we go further in this video, just wanted to give a friendly reminder uh, to like and subscribe to the channel and notify all from, from the, clicking the bell. That's how you know when uh, more of these videos come out uh, on this channel. So I really appreciate it guys, it's uh, really helpful if you, can, if you guys can do that. Now we can get on with the rest of this uh, video. Back to things. 2020 was the year of staying inside or staying away from people, not to mention takeout delivery, things like that. All thanks to, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic. Thankfully, games allowed us to escape from that dreadful reality throughout the year Great games at that. This year paved the way for the new gaming generation via PS5 and Xbox Series X. Now without further ado, here is my top 10 list for best games of 2020. Number 10. Fall Guys A game that exploded in popularity thanks to the power of the streamers on Twitch. Also, the fact that it was free on PlayStation Plus, it's basically a Mario Party Battle Royale, which was genius at the time. Now, its spotlight was a little short and it did get taken by the likes of the game Among Us not too long after. But the game is still alive and well as the seasons roll out for the game. And the game itself was fun at the time as I played with my friends and made some real funny moments. Uh, those were to be had. Featuring various mini games where its jankiness is a characteristic that tries to make it an even playing field for everyone, if that makes sense. The skins and costumes are the main goals for playing the game by collecting in game currency like many other modern games nowadays. So far, its collaborations were really cool, featuring Sonic and even Godzilla of all things, wow. No know if I'll ever return to the game as enticing that Godzilla collaboration was, but for what it, what it is, it's not that bad. It's uh, It had its fun moments, which is why, you know, I think it deserves this number 10 position here. <laughs> Fuck you motherfucker! <laughs> I gotta do it! I gotta do it! <laughs> Got it, get it. <laughs> 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 you motherfucker, I'm coming down there. I'm coming. You bitch ass motherfucker. Go here. Go here. Go here. Go here. Number nine. Star Wars Squadron. If you really want to play a space shooter that is also a flight simulator of sorts, and you have a flight stick just lying around collecting dust, this is your chance to put that thing into good use because this game is really fun for that very specific niche. Of course, it's Star Wars 2. It is compatible with VR, allowing yourself to really immerse into the game. Unfortunately, as I record this, flight sticks are still really difficult to find due to the lack of production and air shipping. Again, all thanks to COVID-19 with its outbreak that lasted all year long pretty much and it's still here well within the early parts of 2021. But back to here, the gameplay and feel are importantly robust and really are highlighted by the extra peripherals. The Star Wars authenticity is definitely uh, there, especially for those who love the spaceships from the franchise. You can really pilot a number of iconic ships and really feel that you, like you're 
you're you're part of the battle with all the sounds and all the whooshing and the lasers passing by you and you firing the lasers and everything it's all there the woos I mean you know what I mean that immersion is definitely definitely there especially with those extra peripherals man especially the the flight stick I think it really helps with that now unfortunately the online player only comprises of smaller battles which is 5v5 or 60v6 something like that the game thankfully has received free updates periodically so hopefully we can get that large scale battle mode that would be really really complete the immersion here that you know the the, the one thing i do ache for this game is that large scale battling ultimately this is one of the few games published from ea that is actually receiving the treatment that gamers love no nasty monetization or nothing which is very surprising given what they've done with this Star Wars exclusivity rights uh, licensing deal, I guess. I hope to see this game getting the continued support that it deserves. Number 8 Gentlemen, you've been given an important task. Protecting our very way of life from a great evil. There is no higher duty there is no higher honor. And while few people will know of your struggles, rest assured, the entire free world will benefit. I know you won't fail us. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War This year's COD game makes it into number 8 on the list here because I actually find it fun in short bursts, from my experience. It effectively scratches that online shooter itch that I always have. Uh, it comes with a campaign mode that Treyarch you know, always seems to know how to make it interesting and stand out from the rest. In my opinion, I found the good ending less satisfying in comparison to the bad ending. But nonetheless, the espionage elements makes it really stand out and fun as well for this campaign mode. Zombie mode is also a good way to kill time with friends and not to mention gain experience with your guns. The online part of things, while still has your Typical COD problems, the PS5 experience does help somewhat with the haptic feedback, you know, with the, the machine guns and all that stuff rumbling as you hold the trigger right then and there on your finger. It makes it a little more interesting or refreshing in my opinion. While I do strongly disagree with the price of the PlayStation 5 version and its shady console to win tactics, this otherwise would have been a pretty solid package. If you can get the you know, past the pricing, this is at least a decent COD game to have on your in, on your collection. Number seven. Grand Blue Fantasy Versus Grand Blue is a series I do follow quite a bit, starting from its mobile game. And I still do, just to pick up on those daily rewards, just for logging in, and do some uh, experience farming here and there to just find the satisfying feeling of leveling up your characters. The series, or franchise, has gotten popular quite a bit, to the point where now it has its own fighting game, so it's pretty well known worldwide if, if not before. Not to mention we still have that Relink game coming somewhere within the two years I guess, I, I guess from as I record this uh, video. I do love the core mechanics within Versus uh, which features easy input special moves which does come with a longer cooldown unless you perform the actual input which rewards you with a shorter cooldown which is a nice incentive to actually learn the game if you want to take it to, to take it to like that next step. It seems to be the best fighting game so far that attempts that sort of easy for newcomers but at the same time fun and interesting and in depth when it comes to the higher levels of competition for these types of games. It does have that Arxis touch with the very stylish anime cel shaded graphics and that art direction that I always love seeing on screen which is a match made in heaven for Grand Blue here. 
Even the selection of its characters as fighters is pretty decent so far. However, the game is largely held back by its subpar online experience as it still uses the loathing delayed base netcode. Frankly, this is a major factor for myself and my friends to quickly move on from this game, sadly. On top of that, the story mode wasn't all that great at keeping me invested, though I do appreciate the work behind it, especially with the voice work once again in Japanese and English being offered here, so which is another kudos that, that must be mentioned here. Also, this year's outbreak from COVID-19 really held us back from forming that backbone of a big potential community uh, for the online folk. Only emphasizing and really pointing out how bad and meager its netcode was. However, thanks to the pandemic, the Japanese devs have highlighted their acknowledgement that the rollback netcode is the way to go and it's very important going forward. Hopefully in the future, this game will receive a new edition of sorts, like a turbo edition or champion edition of sorts to help sales once again and update its netcode to a more robust kind after Guilty Gear Strive makes that convincing pitch that you know having a better netcode is really what's important when it comes to these fighting games nowadays. I really do want to have an excuse to come back for this game because I really do like the uh, all the other aspects of this game, especially with its core gameplay mechanics. You know, having myself be a Charlotte main for those who are curious. And of course, I'm still waiting on my Grand Blue Waifu to make it in there, into the roster, Silva, with that big ass rifle. Number six. Stand for such impertinence! To ashes! I, Fischl, Princess and Defa Ertelung. Eat this! Let's dance! If I tell you the story with a performance, will you believe me? Time for takeoff! Sacred name, fortune preserver. One step closer. Maybe soon I shall finally uncover the truth of this world. I swear by my sword! With sword comes shadow. The verdict is... Genshin Impact Genshin Impact is one of the cases, you know, on my list where, you know, despite being, for the most part, a mobile game, it's pretty high up there on my list at being at number six, you know, even overtaking a game like Grand Blue Versus. This happens to be a free to play gotcha RPG that plays and feels like a full price console game in a way with such good quality graphics and, you know, easy core gameplay mechanics and RPG elements as well from Mihoyo, who previously worked on Honkai Impact 3rd. I love the look of the character so far and the world during my long exploration hours, which is very reminiscent to that of Breath of the Wild with its cell shaded graphics, the way you travel, you know, you can even glide and stuff, and the stamina meter, and so on and so forth. The combat and gameplay, as said before, is relatively simple and yet satisfying with its elemental reactions, team composition, and other RPG elements. One of the major gripes that still stands as of right now are the elements such as the reward system, the resin even now, which does not help with its grinding nature, and of course the monetization tactics that were behind this game, and perhaps are still around as this game still thrives. As usual for many gacha RPGs. Otherwise, the devs are trying their best to make the game please its fans and players, of course, as much as possible. I've been playing it almost daily now and still enjoy it for what it is. I'm still playing it, of course, during the Ganyu banner update. That's how far I am with it right now. I just hope that they don't go too far with certain aspects somehow uh, within the game and keep the game fresh and enjoyable for a long time. Perhaps costumes, perhaps some gameplay changes as well, or additions, you know. And of course, of course, it still needs some quality of life updates for the game as well. Hopefully, they'll address those somewhere down the line. Because I really do like to continue playing this game uh, as it thrives, because it's that interesting to me. 
Number five. Wait the fuck up, samurai. We have a city to burn. Cyberpunk 2077. This was definitely one of my most anticipated games back on one of my lists in 2020. It was, I think, number two in fact. Granted, this is number five on my list. I honestly want it to be placed much higher, but with how the game is in its current state as I record this, I can't. I can't bring myself to do that. The game is such in a poor state even now, and of course, it was such a just absolutely unplayable state for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox versions. So bad that it might as well not have been featured on those systems. They should have really focused making this uh, on the new generation consoles and of course the PC. I think that would have helped it a lot more uh, given how much uh, work it still needs to be done even on those uh, versions. While yes, kudos for trying to let everyone try to access to this game I guess, but CD Projekt Red deceptively threw those versions under the radar until its release in December 2020. Knowingly, with how the game actually was running on those systems, despite the numerous delays, the game still needed more time in the oven. That is honestly one of the biggest gripes I have with Cyberpunk. While that being said, I did actually enjoy my time with this game with plus 60 hours of my time put into it. I did enjoy the world, the lore, the characters, the writing, you know, whatever the game had to offer. The core essential skeleton that the game has set up for itself. And of course, having Keanu Reeves playing Johnny Silverhand was a treat to be had, you know, with all, all that promotion stuff. His inclusion was something to be enjoyable, at least in, from my experience. You know, and the game itself right now at least feels like a Fallout, you know, sort of Blade Runner and that, of course, that cyberpunk genre thrown in there, GTA and combinations of other looter shooters kind of mashed into, into one. And of course, as I said before, those games already done it uh, better for this genre. They've had experience granted, but nonetheless, they're, they've, 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 they've been done mu so much better than what Cyberpunk has uh, currently. Of course, the bugs and glitches. How can we forget? As funny as they were, they broke the immersion and took away my experience for a game that's supposed to be very immersive. Otherwise, the game does feel complete in terms of content and the game, as, as I said, is fun in its own right. The game, I must say again, needed more time in the freaking oven. That way the polish could have been done and this game could have been one of the milestones in gaming history but you know as it launched it was a joke it was a, it was one of the biggest memes in gaming history at least for these later generations of course it, I mean it does hurt to talk about it in this sense I did want this game to be my first good CD project red uh, game for me to kind of get into their sort of you know plethora I guess if that makes sense um, otherwise it's a 6 out of 10 for me um, and of course here it's number 5 on this list um, I know recently they've came out with apology and all this stuff but you can you know that that video is nice to be had but it shouldn't ha not have happened in the first place you know the game needed more time it was it was their fault still for making a decision to try to get this game out as soon as possible instead of really taking this that sweet time 
avoiding, you know, and in, 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 in allowing crunch time and it just created more stress and it just really ruined what could have been, again, a milestone in the history of gaming. But now instead it just lies on right in the middle of my 2020 best games list here. Number four. ジュライよりパワーアップ。ご入店されますか。全作龍が如く 6 から Yakuza, like a dragon. Who would have thought that turn-based gameplay would work for a Yakuza game which is much more action-oriented? Well, you got Gotoku Studios did. And they were right, I guess. And it really turned out to be a fun-ass JRPG with that turn-based mechanic that I always, always love as a traditional JRPG player myself. Firstly, an April Fool's joke of sorts that turned into the real thing sometime during development of Yakuza 7, the original title. Nonetheless, it parodies the popular JRPGs, but also celebrates them. You know, it makes po uh, it pokes fun at, you know, Persona 5, it makes references of Dragon Quest, and so much other little pokes here and there, but it actually makes it work for its gameplay, so it, in fact, celebrates them very strongly and done right. The story was very engaging and the new characters were all lovable, including the new protagonist Ichiban Kasuga. It is said that the poofy haired Dragon Quest fan will continue to be the main protagonist throughout the future Yakuza game, which I am definitely okay with. While these gameplay elements were fun for this, uh, for this case here, I would like for the series to return to its action-based roots and really see how Ichiban performs there. I really can't wait. It's eminent that we'll see a new Yakuza game on the horizon somewhere in 2021. Now before we go into the top three of best games, I would like to make a honorable mention here in this list. This honorable mention goes to Among Us. This is a special case, of course. This actually came out in 2018. However, thanks to, once again, the power of streaming and content creation in general, the game exploded and has had a longer retention in comparison to that of Fall Guys. While the game isn't really my exact sort of cup of tea as someone who spent a couple of hours playing with friends, I can definitely see the appeal. It's always not the content creators themselves that are the center of attention, the impostures, and its waning survivors take that spotlight and it becomes free content creation in a way while the content creator him or herself can just sit back and just let it all unfold while the stream chat can just take it all in as well bask in that rage and just the need to survive and all the lies and deception and betrayal and everything in between there has been so many memorable moments as you really get to see the different sides of the content creators, despite having said that earlier, especially during these collaborations. Monster, you, you understand that that if if if, Bro, if, the, if the killer killed right there on the spot, the game would have been over, right? Yeah. I'm the Why? one that called the meeting! I, I called, called the meeting! Me Look, my, I got the fucking microphone! I'm fucking talking! I'm the one that got the fucking microphone! I, was I didn't kill I was you! Oh, I didn't kill- All in all, it is a case in point that the power of content creation and streaming with the exposure uh, given by its streamers and creators is so valuable and symbiotic between the dev company, publishers, and of course, the latter, whichever. There is nothing that should stand in between this relationship, especially a monetizing barrier. You know who I'm talking about, doesn't need to be said. And now, we can go into top three. 
Number three. There's even more to discover. Snowflakes are falling. Catch them to craft snowflake themed DIY items and furniture. Snowballs will also appear, which can be rolled to create snowboys. Certain snowboys may produce large snowflakes that you can use in crafting other winter themed DIY items. Frosty times are just around the corner. If you're looking to get a head start on your New Year's resolutions, why not learn some new reactions? Animal Crossing New Horizons. This game was a long wait in terms of console gaming in general. The handheld systems took over the franchise for a long while until the revelation of the Nintendo Switch. There we finally got the Animal Crossing game we've all been waiting for. Unlike the Wii U's Amiibo Festival, we do not speak of that beyond this. Anyhow, New Horizons offers a fresh twist for the Animal Crossing franchise as you're building an entire island, rather just your house. While some features are left to be much desired, such as the crafting system and the durability of your tools, it's beautiful, serene, and just relaxing to play as it was the perfect game during the COVID-19 pandemic. The game is still getting continuous updates of sorts, especially with all those different events and holidays. Admittedly though, I have not hopped back onto this game as of recent because of the other games I've been keeping myself busy here. But perhaps the Mario event that's coming, I believe in March, that's probably when the time I'll be likely hopping back on. Hopefully my neighbors are still there waiting for me return to the island. Number two. If you continue down this path, you will be no better than the Mongols. I trained you to fight with honor. Honor died on the beach. The Khan deserves to suffer. Ghost of Tsushima Believe it or not, Ghost of Tsushima is actually number two on the list here. This was a long, difficult decision to make between this and another game. Believe it or not, Ghost of Tsushima is actually number two on this list here. Earlier this year, I believe I gave this game a 10 out of 10 and thought this game deserved the Game of the Year for 2020 at the Game Awards. However, that did change as I thought long and hard between this and the game that landed number one, of course. It was a long, hard decision. I thought long and hard about it. But after, you know, some time, I've came to the decision that Tsushima is going to land here on number two. But it is not to say that the game falls short of anything, really. The game was gorgeous having to tackle the Japanese theme with flying colors, quite literally. The combat within Tsushima was all so satisfying. It made you feel like a samurai or a ninja, depending on how you approach things. That's the beauty of it, really. The experience ultimately was what I love about this game, straight from Sucker Punch Productions, which was one of the last studios that I ever, ever thought that would make a game like this. It's hard to believe that this game performed this well on the PlayStation 4. Although granted, I did play this on the PlayStation 4 Pro, but nonetheless, it still performed pretty well on the regular PlayStation 4. The story of honor, war, and love was an epic telling to be had through Ghost of Tsushima, accompanied by its awesome musical score and performances by the cast. If you're a big fan of the samurai media or genre, you gotta pick this up if you haven't already. It really does it justice, Kurosawa style of cinema touches in this game. So that's a plus as well. You even get that option where you can make it 
Kurosawa style in terms of like the actual black and white. But in my opinion, that's kind of like a disservice or you're doing yourself a crime by missing out on the gorgeous colors as I just mentioned before. Also, let's not forget that the game had free DLC updates after its launch, which was something never asked by the, the players, but very welcome with a co-op gameplay thrown in there as well into the mix. Ghost of Tsushima, even being at number two, was the most appropriate way to end the eighth gaming generation. It was a great last hurrah. It absolutely deserved all the recognition, praise, and respect from its players. But now, let's move on to number one. Number one. Justice, honor, freedom, vain indulgences everywhere. Every time the whispers touch me, I lose something, a part of myself. Tonight marks a new beginning. For Shinra! This could well be her last line of defense. Let's go. Final Fantasy VII Remake Yep, that's right. It is indeed the remake of one of the most legendary video games of all time, making it here to number one on my 2020 list. The story on its development itself is an epic tale in its own right, but the game for the most part reflected that hard work and dedication, blood, sweat, and tears to getting this game down to the very core of that Final Fantasy VII authenticity that the players from old endeared so much from long ago. FF7 Remake's cutscenes were just jaw-dropping, especially when you remember how the game looked back then during those days of the original PlayStation. That vision translated to the new gaming generation so seamlessly and beyond. The combat mechanics this time around for a JRPG was that perfect blend of action and turn-based combat that pleased both player bases, I'm sure. The characters were so flushed out so well especially Cloud Strife here, the main character. Being able to take such an old story and amp it up to modern standards was such a great turnout that needs to be credited for. The localization was super solid, the music, fantastic. The extra scenes stuffed into this game was such a treat, especially during the honeybee section and of course Roach. That blend of that serious, engaging, immersive nature along with that humorous combination is a very strong reminder to that of Yakuza in a way. Of course, it had its faults like the level designs and the graphical fidelity on some parts, but the polish was done in all the areas that really counted. I think it is safe to say that FF7 Remake came out better than we could ever imagine. And this is coming from someone who didn't play the original title back in the day. But now, I am a believer and a fan of the FF7 series. It is interesting when it comes to what they've done with the story, which is vastly different overall. This sets up so much anticipation for a great story or something really, 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 really screwed up. And that is one of the reasons why it's number one. D anticipation and as i said before between final fantasy 7 remake and ghost this was such a tough tough toss-up now i must say the overall fidelity and environmental designs gotta go to ghost of tsushima while final fantasy had the more captivating cinematics and and characters you can't help but feel that the characters and other elements in Final Fantasy VII Remake are so much more vibrant and colorful in comparison to that of Ghost. But again, this was a tough choice. These two were so fantastic in their own right. But the lasting impression has got to go to Final Fantasy. Man, that story. What they could do with this game next leaves me very excited, but at the same time, anxiously waiting. 
the anticipation is just super high, sky high in fact, and I hope for a good turnout for part 2, which hopefully won't take too long. But nonetheless, I do look forward to it. I had a great time with this part 1 of Remake. I cannot wait what it has in store. So that is it for my top 10 games of 2020. That is my list here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, share me your top 10 games of 2020 uh, in the comment section below. I would love to check them out. And as said before, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell to notify all. That always helps out. Really appreciate it, guys. And so, this has been my top 10 games of 2020. And of course, this is my personal list here. So, all based off of my opinion and not speaking for the general community. So, thank you guys so much. I have my disappointing games coming up next. Please look forward to that. And so until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Sean out.